So here we are back in rotation again, and now that a uh, hero battle is on its way out if it's not already ended by the time this video is uh, up. But yeah, we'll just be uh, playing some good old nature uh, dragon. We still haven't run, we're still running, slowly running through the uh, decks that got buffed in the recent balance patch. I haven't gotten through them yet. So here we are playing some nature uh, dragon. I mean, the main buff is just Benevolent Mother, which he now uh, has a 6 6 stats and heal 6, which is. I mean better, obviously, it's just the upgrade. I mean sometimes it can be because it's a downgrade, but for the most part it's an upgrade. And if I actually did play a uh, Nature Dragon for uh, most of the expansion, but I figured I might as well try it out now, now that I have some vials to uh, spare so I can go ahead and craft this, because this, this deck is expensive, I mean there's like a ton of legendaries in here, right? So yeah, this is the uh, list I'm playing, it's not really an optimal list from anywhere, I just like sort of put it together myself and just messed around with it with a bit of testing and this is the list that I've been playing. Um, of course the uh, main star of the show is Valdain and his Shadows Rejection which is used to reduce max HP. Um, most decks you can't win by waiting for max HP because you will die before that so we do run Forte and Miriam as well as Terminus Dragon for uh, options for Storm so that we can finish the game after your opponent's max HP is down. And then we uh, run Goddess and Compassion here to mostly as an answer for rune because uh, the uh, Machina rune OTK is 24 damage so having Goddess and Compassion puts you out of range it's like more or less the only way to get out of range. Yeah, um, this is the list that we'll be playing today. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's jump in some games. So we have a game against Shadow here and we are going second. Um, Shadow, I think Machina Shadow like sort of faded out for a bit but now it's back again so we have to deal with that. Um, for the mulligan we just keep the Terran piece, we keep the uh, Dragon Oracle here. Early tree generator plus ramp, always nice to have. We don't really need Goddess of Compassion early on even though it is ramp but I don't think it's that important. Actually, If anything Goddess of Compassion is more important for her transmute in this matchup. Uh, which is enough, we bring me to a point I guess that Goddess of Compassion uh, in this deck we, both uses of her are uh, relatively important, so you have to sort of decide which use you want to use in each game. Yeah, my opponent's just playing a bunch of hoverboard, uh, hoverboard float, hoverboard speedsters. But we don't really care because uh, we have a lot of healing, so we'll just go ahead and try to draw through our deck. We're able to draw an Agaran Oracle, so we just go ahead and ramp. Uh, for this matchup, I think it might actually be worth keeping Valdain. I think Valdain alone can win you this matchup like a decent amount of time, so probably want to look out for that. There's the Valdain. We do pick it up. So we go ahead and just slam that instantly. There's absolutely no reason to go for Goddess to ramp here. Getting Valdain's effect uh, active as fast as possible is definitely the priority for this matchup. You can. This is one of the few matchups you can win purely from Valdain's effect if you just play carefully. Of course, if you can see a path to lethal, you should probably just take it, but... Uh, yeah, Valdain's effect is definitely quite effective against this because they have not a lot of lethality. I mean, they do have stuff like Lubel, which does a lot of damage, but... You can heal through the damage with stuff like Bene Benevolent Mother or Goddess of uh, Compassion. Or Minion, something like that. Yeah, we just go ahead and draw through our deck without getting trees destroyed. Uh, Crystal, Crystal Shard Dragon you is a great way to do that. It also helps you clear board. It helps you with refund PP. This card just does a lot. I mean, some matchups you might really have to save this, but for a uh, uh, Machina Shadow, we can just use this as like a in-between play just to apply some pressure to my opponent. And there's the Amia. It's fine. They do play the Dry Secure as well, but fortunately it's not much of a board. Uh, they play the Zombo Droid there, they do take out my Crystalline Dragon with that, and I'm guessing down goes my uh, the, uh, Desert Man guy whose name I forgot. It's fine. So we go ahead and just uh, draw through our deck, get our trees active so that we can keep dis discounting their uh, max health. Draw, try to draw more useful cards. Here we have a uh, room to play Galata Compassion here. It's a bit risky to spend your Benevolent Mother on a fuse like that, but I didn't really have to draw any better fusion targets, so we just go ahead and fuse the Galas of Compassion. Uh, we save our evil point here. This is just an assembly draw, we don't really care if it stays on board. So yeah, we just go ahead and save the evil point, it's pretty valuable. This deck has actually zero ways to recover evil points, so 
uh, play sparingly with them. My opponent also can play double joy secured here, which is fine. With the health fire strike as well, and I guess they hit my face. Uh, probably because they decided they don't want to trade, I guess. So we'll go ahead and play the Crystal Dragon Nuke here. We'll just go ahead and uh, try to snipe something. We do snipe the Roly Poly, which is definitely uh, very lucky for me. We we'll just draw more into our deck as well. Got the Crystal Dragon Nuke here. We we'll go ahead and open up the tree as well, which will uh, draw us more into our deck. Got another Gauss of Compassion. We can consider using the. Uh, we can consider using the Gauss of Compassion. So. Transmute later on, but since we pick out a Valdane here, we're just gonna use the Valdane. Accelerate their max HP reduction so that we can to kill them. And uh, it's a, it feels a bit bad to have to trade like actual damaging cards into their followers, but it's not really a big problem in the scheme of things. I mean, look at their max HP, they're already almost dead. <laughs> at this point, Forte and Mirror alone could just take out their entire health, so. We're not super worried. But there's the Lubel. I, I guess my opponent is trying to take out Ania. Uh, if you don't know, you can actually see what Lubel adds to your opponent's hand if you check the log. You can, you can actually see what it does. I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can check. Yeah, you can check here, see. Yeah, if you don't know, you can check the uh, the, uh, the what Lubel adds. You, you you can attack. Uh, here my opponent does a lot of cool shit, but like it doesn't matter. There's no way they're killing me anyway. And then uh, since they left that bar open, we can just slam Forte and Miriam, and now they are dead. So yeah, this match I think is pretty good for a uh, dragon if you're playing like a more control oriented version. So let's move on to the next game. So now we have a game against Haven. We're going first this time. Against Haven, we just look for a ramp and uh, a nice tree generator we can use with Gina, hopefully. Like, Alphorus is of course quite useless in this matchup since we have no targets for it. Yeah, uh, pretty unfortunate hand here, no ramp to be seen. We go ahead and just get the tree out here. There's no reason to save the spell. We're trying to look for a ramp, so getting the tree out ASAP is uh, more beneficial. We we'll go ahead and play the Thunderous Velociraptor here. We can pressure damage to their face, and if they pop it, we can get the tree to draw. This is the bad moves for my opponent, so I guess they're leaving the Thunderous Velociraptor alive. We top deck Gina, cause I guess we're good at this game, so. Yeah, and then we just go ahead and ramp here and just punch them in the face. And there's the Terran tree, so this is definitely Amulet. And there's Angel of the Covenant here, which will uh, summon the Divine Wolves, which we'll use to. Pop my Gina apparently, which is fine. Gina gives me more trees anyway, so we can just use that to draw more into our deck. We've got the Benevolent Mother here. Obviously, we're not at enough trees, but we're just using this to draw. As you can see, our hand is actually quite thin, so using the Benevolent Mother to draw is perfectly fine. We'll you know, uh, get some damage going face. Just an added bonus, I guess. The Sanctum of Wings for my opponent. No Selena, thankfully. There's the Desert Wanderer as well. They're going to use to draw into their deck as well as get some amulets destroyed. I think it's cool how these trees just end up having synergy with a lot of different decks in different ways. Yeah, this is them trading off and then we just pop the tree and we go ahead and draw a card here. We got the ramp, so we're just gonna ramp and I'm just gonna try to dig into our deck look for Valdane so we can perhaps get their max HP dropped. Um. In terms of Terminus Dragoon, there's not really any reason to... Well, there's not any particularly compelling reason to just hold on to it forever. In the end, you get your best value by discounting cards from this. So we'll go ahead and play it now that we only have two uh, Dragon followers in our hand. Both of these are pretty good to discard. Forte Mirror, of course, will help us get lethal when we discard discount her. So we can go ahead and discount her and that'll be beneficial. And then uh, Crystal Sharp Dragon Newt uh, can PP cheat because she recovers 3 play points, so putting her down to 2 just makes it easy to activate her, which is fine. Let me go ahead and trade off here. Uh, the damage output of uh, Amulet Haven is not negligible, so it's a bit risky to leave the Desert Wanderer alive there, which is why I traded. There's the uh, 
Lina from them as well. They are gonna lose one element Kimber, which is perfectly fine with me. Go ahead and pay attention, they are at 5. Three, play, three followers that cost at least 5. Uh, here we have not much to do, we're just gonna go ahead and play Goddess, clear their board, heal up. Increase our max HP. Uh, heal Haven. Not Heal Haven, Amulet Haven has a relatively decent OTK, so we want to heal out of their range if we can. Go into our deck to hopefully get Forte and Miriam uh, ready to kill my opponent. Um, we don't really have Valdane here, so we might have to look for an OTK. They do clear our thing, and then there's the Angel of the Covenant, which they will probably use to uh, summon a bunch of amulets. Fine. There's a lot of followers uh, hidden in them, so we have to be prepared to clear those. So we can go ahead and use the uh, crystal, the crystal uh, dragon new here, and then that will pop the uh, the uh, a seraph, which will I guess summon a bunch of stuff for them, which is fine. Actually, ideally this, unfortunately this didn't evolve for us, so we can't trade off our desert wonder, but that's fine. Go ahead and use the Benevolent Mother here. This will help us uh, get rid of their followers. As well as being a card that's destroyed for Crystal Shard Dragon Utes. We'll go ahead and trade here. And then uh, I believe that yeah, we've used the Succulent Stegosaurus to uh, guarantee Terminus Dragon's targets. Well, apparently I do that first. Yeah, that makes sense to me. This is fine because we do want to... Uh, we do want to use Valdane anyway, so we go ahead and play Crystal Dragon Mute to, uh, I mean, play the uh, Terminus to uh, discount the Valdane and the Forte and Miriam. It's fine. There's another Asara from them. And there's the Meowskers as well. Not really sure what they're out to here. We get to draw a bunch of cards. Hopefully, we pick out another Motley Alliance because Forte and Miriam's buff is not guaranteed currently. Desert Wanderer. And then there's the Mums as well, which heals them a little bit and also gets rid of my followers. So we're in this awkward spot where it kind of looks like we should have lethal, but we actually don't. So it kind of looks like you can do something like you play Valdane. Like, if you just count the thing, alright? If you play Valdane spell, the well, actually, no, it doesn't work like that, so yeah, it's fine. We are for. Anyway, the point is that we don't have to kill this turn, so we have to survive in our turn, which is uh, a bit unfortunate here. So go ahead and just draw into our deck. Honestly, I think you could just go uh, Forte and Miriam here if you wanted to. Well, not anymore, not due to the Velociraptor. But yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and take this turn to set up Valdane's uh, Shadow Rejection so that we can uh, start reducing their max HP. Um, we played the uh, Thunderous Velociraptor here so that uh, next time when we play Forte and Miriam and buff a follower, it's higher chance of hitting the Valdane. So there's the Selena from them, finally. Hopefully we don't die here, so that's why we approach. We go draw a card here, and there's the Meowskers from them as well, which is fine. Meowskers is not really lethal, so we don't take anything that isn't immediately lethal. And there's another Fiery Reproach from them. And there's Mark Overcome. And there's Tree, and so we barely survive this turn, I think. And we take a bunch of damage here, so we do barely survive it. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have guaranteed lethal here, but we just have to go for it. So we go ahead and uh, thankfully we do hit one buff on the uh, Terminus Dragon. We needed a buff on either the Valdane or the Dragon to guarantee lethal here and thankfully we did get it. So yeah, that's it for this game. Let's move on to the next one. So, uh, we have another game here. We're going first and this is against Rune. Against Rune, I'm almost tempted to just hard mulligan for a uh, Goddess of Compassion, but I think ramp is still important so we do keep ramp. Other than that, I think just hard looking for a Goddess Competition is probably the best bet for survival. I'm sure we don't pick it up here, so we just go ahead and summon a tree and just pass, I guess. Not much else we can do. Hono oh, whips out the Amaryllis here, which is fine, I guess. Uh, we pick up Ramp, so we just play Ramp, we just Ramp. Ramp is the way of Dragon. And there's Lane Crest for my opponent, which I guess tells me they have another Amaryllis in their hand now. 
So we go ahead and just ramp again. We have nothing else to do. And there is the Amaryllis from my opponent, second one. And then they go ahead and play Curse of Suffering, which is great. Because this means that they put uh, both Amaryllis in range of being cleared by Valdane. Uh, we really don't have anything to play here. If anything, we could have played Terminus Dragoon maybe, but other than that, there was really nothing to do, so we just passed. My opponent also didn't have anything to do, so they also just passed. So we're gonna go ahead and play Terminus Dragoon here, which will discount the Crystal Shard for later. Our main uh, goal of our horse is to play Valdane here. And then his AoE minus 2 minus 2 will clear both Amaryllises. Hopefully, I mean honestly with the way they spent both Amaryllis there, they most likely have the third one in hand anyway, so we're not out of the woods yet and there's the tech wizard, so uh, we should be a bit concerned that they might kill us. I mean, there's not, there's a chance we just survive, I mean, but if they have like uh, Rocket Bloom Witch, Rocket Bloom Witch 2 Tetras and uh, and uh, Isle, Rowans of Island or something, we can still die next turn. So in order to avoid that, we're gonna go ahead and play the uh, Goddess of Compassion. We're gonna... Oh, we use this to draw first. This is a bit of a risky move. Plus, if I don't draw a card, I can fuse into a Goddess of Compassion, then I will not be able to increase my max health. But I'm betting on the fact that I they probably don't have OTK anyway, so yeah. We do pick out a fusion target, so we'll just go ahead and fuse there. And then use the uh, Galas of, Com of Dominion. Is that what she's called? Condemnation. To uh, go ahead and increase our max HP to put us out of range of a more standard Tetra Lethal. Let's tag Wizard from them, so I guess they didn't even have it anyway. So yeah, maybe a bit of wasted effort. Perhaps. But we don't know what's in their hands, so we gotta play it safe. Unfortunately, our hand is pretty empty now. We got the Stegosaurus, which is great. We're gonna go ahead and just slam that instantly. So go ahead and give us a tree so we can draw into our deck as well as uh, put a bunch of high stated followers which might cause them problems if they try to use Tetra. Honestly, Tetra can probably clear this anyway, but it's the thought that counts, I guess. We want to draw more cards anyway. And also, they did have the third Emery list, so they're gonna go ahead and spend that. Go ahead and evolve it. We know we won't die this turn, so hopefully we don't take too much damage and we can try to heal off the damage we take this turn. There's the Ruins of Iolim. And the Rocket Room Bridge as well. There the goes our board. They play the Azure Blast, so we take a bunch of damage here. And they do have the Ginger, unfortunately, so... We're not really out of the woods yet. They do copy the Tetra. You can see what card they copy. So yeah, they te copied the Tetra there. It's not great. So this is a very awkward position to be in, uh, to explain a bit. Um, we have to clear this Amaryllis or we are very light to die next turn, letting them get 12 damage out of their... Uh... Well, if you do the math here, if they get... if they have, they have, We know they have one Tetra in hand, right? So if they get that one Tetra to deal 12 damage to our face, Amaryllis can just attack us for 1 to kill us at 13. Of course we will heal a bit, but uh, it's very risky to let Amaryllis live because it's, she represents so much damage alongside Tetra. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, clear Amaryllis. Unfortunately, we are out of evil points, so we have to spend a ton of play points on Valdane plus Shadow's Rejection here, so that's what we do. So uh, we go ahead and do it this way so that... Uh, and then we fuse the Gina here to give us a tree. And we do it this way so when we play this tree, it, uh, Crystal Charge is guaranteed to snipe the Emberless. And then we just heal a bit with Neteran Peace here and hopefully we don't die this turn. There's the Tetra. Hopefully they don't have another Ginger, but they do have another Ginger. They will be able to copy their Tetra again. Uh, if all 16 damage manages to go face, we still die, so hopefully that doesn't happen to us. There's the recovery from them. Another recovery. And a Fate's Hand. Fate's Hand is fine, it's like a neutral card. And that's another recovery, which gives them the uh, Delta Cannon. They go ahead and heal, and then they trade off the Tetra. And then uh, they go ahead and play Azer Blast here. Thankfully, one of them hits Valdane, so I do live this turn with just one health left over. We know that they're out of Tetras in their hand unless they have a main body Tetra. But so all we have to do is just, again, play carefully, just heal up, and we should be fine. 
We pick out another Gauss of Compassion here, which we were going to play, but since we picked up the Stegosaurus, we're gonna use that instead. Now that uh, we have seen a bunch of their cards spent, their capacity to clear this uh, Stegosaurus should be quite uh, difficult for them. So, uh, the opponent tries to find an answer here for Ruins of uh, Ireland, but it looks like they couldn't clear it, so they just conceded. So, that's it for this game. You just play safe, uh, keep controlling, and maybe you can win. Yeah. So well, that's it for uh, the games I have for you today. Um, hope, it, hope it gave you an idea of how this deck worked. Of course this list is not super optimal. There are lists that completely cut Valdane altogether and just go all in for OTK. There are lists that don't run Forte and Miriam and just go for pure control but I don't pers I personally don't like running decks that uh, don't have a way to finish the opponent like that isn't just waiting for them to die. So I do like running the Forte and Miriam, which is why I run it. This is just a personal taste kind of thing. If you want to run a different list, of course, just run a different list. But yeah, I think this deck is pretty fun. Unfortunately, this specific list I'm running has a sort of a decent amount of both control tools and a finisher. So um, because it's not, not like uh, it's not like super specialized in either one, you sort of have to pick your game plan. And figure out how you do it because you can't just pure control and then OTK because um, the OTK requires a bit of setup and planning to perform, especially with things like Motley Alliance for Fusion, um, Terminus uh, Dragoon to uh, discount your hand beforehand, using Valdane's uh, spell to reduce max HP and whatnot, and then the control tools control. So, yeah, um, pretty fun deck though. So, yeah, if you want to play this deck, you can go ahead and play it. It's a bit expensive though, so uh, I guess you gotta keep that in mind, but other than that. Uh, yeah, it's nice that uh, Dragon has a playable deck. Well, really every class has a playable deck, which is uh, very nice. And yeah, that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.